Training Series, Part 7. In this segment, we're going to be discussing the fourth and final method for approaching toilet training. So this method we'll call the fast track method. This is going to be one, two, three, and you're trained. How do we do this? So we need to know a few things before we start with this approach. Number one is I want to make sure that I believe that my child really is ready. Go back to segments one and two where I discuss a little bit more about how to tell if my child is ready and when it's a good time to really feel more confident. But if you're going to start this method, you don't want to be not so sure. I don't really know if it's a good time. You want to be sure. Okay? We're confident here. We're doing this. We're doing it today. And the second thing is that you have to be completely okay with accidents. With this method, expect accidents. We're probably going to be seeing a number of them. That's the other side of the fact that it's going to be so fast. So we have the advantage. This should be pretty quick. Disadvantage, it's gonna be a little wet and messy. But okay, we have to be okay with that. So how do we do it? First of all, we're going to start the day with the child and we need between 24 and 72 hours for this method. And we have to really be with the child. So we're not sending the child to playgroup or school. Um, we're not going to be going very many places. In fact, the more homebound you are, the quicker it goes and the easier it is to do this, which you'll see why when we discuss what we have to do here. So you need a few days and we start the day with telling the child, um, guess what? Today, we're going to be trained. Yay! Isn't that exciting? Now, we're not asking. We're not saying, do you want to be trained? Mm -mm. We're not begging. Oh, please, could you be toilet trained? No. We're telling them. Today, we're doing this, and it's going to be great. So what we have to do is we have to, once we tell them that today is the day for toilet training, we tell them that we're going to be saying goodbye to diapers. Now, it's probably a wise idea even at this point to prep them for the fact that most likely it's gonna be a good idea for them to wear a diaper at night regardless of what happened during the day. So when we say goodbye to the diapers, we're saying goodbye until the night when you go to sleep and then we have special night diapers. Now, whether that means it's a special kind of pull up or a different kind of diaper or it's really just the same diaper as you use during the day, it doesn't matter because from now on these are nighttime diapers. And hopefully we will discuss in a future segment a little bit more about what to do at night, but right now we're just talking about daytime independence. So we take away the diaper and we say we're saying goodbye to diapers. We're, we don't need them anymore until the night. Now, what you have to do then is you have to know that there's no nagging or reminding here, okay? So when we take off the diaper, we, give, we do give instruction, okay? So we do tell them when you need to make, let um, mommy, daddy, whoever's doing this know. But we don't tell them, um, so don't forget, if you have to make, please tell me and we remind you and you have to make now and maybe we should go to the bathroom and I think it's a good idea. Okay, you see where I'm going with this, right? None of that. We're cutting all of that out here. And what happens is when we are very straightforward and we say this is what we're doing and we're sure that the child is ready, and we do just take away the diaper, we're kind of, it's kind of like the method of throwing somebody in the water and saying it's 
sink or swim, okay? We're really telling the child, you have to do this, okay? But you can do this. You have to do it, but you can. If you think about it like that, you'll also understand why we can't remind and beg and pull the child to do it. Because if we do that, then what we're saying is two contradictory methods. You have to do this, you don't have diapers, but I don't really think you could do it. Mm, that doesn't really work, okay? So if I'm saying you have to, and there's no other choice but going to the bathroom, now what we have to do is step back, and without reminding, without nagging, allowing the child to see what happens. And this is gonna be the essential point of this method, which is when I ignore the message that my body sends me that I need to go to the bathroom, what happens? So you ignore it long enough, guess what? You end up with a mess. Now, here's where the relaxed attitude about accidents has to come in because if I'm the one getting upset, then guess what? My child won't be. Because even though we might think, well, if I yell and I get upset, then my child will understand that it's upsetting, it actually does the opposite. It says, I'm so worried and I can't have an accident. What we want the child to say is, I can't have an accident, okay? So we want the child to take responsibility here. We don't want to remind, we don't want to nag. Okay, so we allow it to happen, and what happens is, what we should see by the end of 24 hours, if not that the child is already successfully going to the toilet, which sometimes happens, we want to see by the end of the 24 hours that they've at least had one success. Okay, then we know we're starting day two already with a success. Remember at the night we put their diaper on. Day two, we then know that we're starting it with one success, already a feather in the cap here, okay? Now, in day two, what we're hoping to see is more successes than accidents. If that's the case, but if by the end of the day, we still haven't quite gotten it, okay? So there's still, at the end, were a few accidents. Then we can still work with day three, and that's okay. Some kids do take do need that third day to really, really get it and to understand. But once we're pat, once we're at 72 hours, the child should be trained. If they're not, then there's a couple of things we want to consider. One, maybe they weren't really ready. Two, maybe I didn't step back enough to allow them to experience the accident and see what it was like for themselves so they could take responsibility. In that case, I do recommend stopping and not continuing and trying to keep going with the same method. You could come back to this method after a break, but I wouldn't recommend keeping on going after 72 hours. Now, that's the end of this method, and stay tuned for the next few segments where we will discuss after we train the child, and the child is what we consider trained, some problems that may crop up and what we can do about that.